I was just frazzled initially. I was worried and scared and the money was going down in the account. And I'm like, okay, do I do Instagram? Do I do LinkedIn? Do I go to conferences? Do I just do all the things? And that just perpetuated. I'll have what she's she's having. having. Welcome to another edition of Digital Confidence Podcast. Stories about confidence for women by women. This is the She Talks Confidence Podcast. Hello again. I am Tony. I'm your host. I am a therapist, girl dad, and a confidence coach, all wrapped up into one. And welcome back this week. I'm very excited to have Kendra Nicole. Hi, Kendra. How are you? I am fabulous. How are you doing? I'm doing great. We're going to talk confidence. We're going to talk finance because you, I'm going to read a little bit of your intro. So after graduating from Clemson, you quickly moved up the corporate ladder while working for corporations and you worked for GE. And that led you to pursue your love for small business strategy by founding the Finance Femme Accounting and Fractional CFO Firm. And yeah. you also host a six month mentorship and coaching and retreat program called Peace and Profits. I love the peace part. That's great. I, I, I want to get into that. And her Scalable Firms program where she coaches others in accounting and finance professionals on brand and business building. I think it's always good to start what your story is and the confidence issues that you uh, dealt with, either, either growing up, going to school, finding your niche, getting into your finance, it, especially with very successful women like yourself that have found themselves in a position of being a mentor now, of being yeah. a teacher. So can you start where that all began and move on from there? I guess the the best story with that is when I was in corporate and I never thought that entrepreneurship, I never even thought about entrepreneurship. I don't come from an entrepreneurial family. And so I wanted to climb the corporate ladder and that was my goal. And that's what my mom did and my dad did. And, Mm -hmm. and so I was very, I was actually very confident in the corporate side. I was like, okay, I can do this. I can grow up that ladder and get that corner office with the floor to ceiling windows and kick back. Is that because you had really good people to look up? Your parents did it and you knew how to do it and it seemed like it was possible and they were very supportive of that? Absolutely. Like okay. I, I, the path was, I saw the path, right? I okay. saw them go through this path mm-hmm. as I was growing up and my dad worked for the same company, he worked for Toyota for decades. And mm-hmm. so I saw how he did it. My mom was in accounting. I saw how she did it. My sister, my older sister, I was watching how she did it. So the path was very clear for me and defined. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, back to do this. And I loved what I was doing. I loved finance and I had amazing bosses my entire career and was very confident in that. And what actually happened was sit in on these boardroom meetings and support the CFO and hear how he would have dialogue with the CEO and the CEO wouldn't make a move until they ran it by the CFO and we'd run back into our offices and run the numbers and present everything. And it was very confidence building because mm-hmm. your CEO is leaning on you and your team to make these valuable decisions. Yeah. And yeah, I felt great in that role. But I had friends who were creating businesses and they were actually doing really well from a revenue perspective. They were making a lot of money, Mm -hmm. but they were, they weren't feeling it. Like they were like still struggling. And I'm shocked. I'm like, hey, like you're making millions of dollars in business. How are you feeling like you're struggling in business? Long story short, I'm like, put me in contact with your accountant. Let me see what's going on. They didn't have an accountant. I'm like, Uh And that was my first lesson when I realized there are a lot of businesses out there that are amazing at what they do, but they don't necessarily have the full team like a corporation has to mm-hmm. support. Them. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, let's see how we can fix this. So I started to support them in getting their accounting together and helping them from a fractional CFO standpoint. But from a confidence standpoint, I was like, wait a second, am I really able to do this? In a corporate at GE, there are hundreds of us in the finance department. And now you want me as one individual person to come in and help put all of this together. So right. there was definitely um, some confidence building there in the beginning to understand, am I actually capable to take what I learned in corporate and help you in a way in your business? Isn't that fascinating that you even had the doubts of being capable in this? Because you're really in your roundhouse, right? You're in your skill. You're in, you're doing the thing that you do very well in the corporate. Yet, because the structure isn't there and because it's a new gig and because you're on your own, it gives you this false sense of insecurity or something. How long did it take you in the new environment to ground yourself in the fact that, oh, wait a minute, this is kind of just the same stuff that I've been doing. And I, in, in the back of my mind, I know how to do this already. It's interesting. It, it, the work itself 
I, I became very confident and pretty quickly because I was like, okay, no, I know this. I can do this. PNL is a PNL. A balance sheet is a balance sheet. I can do this. Mm-hmm. But it was the building of my own team and my own actual, like creating it as a business where I was mm-hmm. like, okay, wait a second. I am not an entrepreneur. I didn't have the pathway. My family, right. again, not entrepreneurs. Right. So even when I was having conversations with my dad about it in the beginning, okay, I'm going to actually make this a business. And he was just like, wait, what? Like how? Like. Why? You got to right. eat. Don't eat. What are you doing? So I have to learn. How do I build a team? How do I actually structure this thing out? And that I did not go to school for. Mm-hmm. And so that took me, I would say, a solid year or two in business before I actually started to feel like I own a business versus I am someone who's like wearing all the hats and just getting by day to day. A lot of times you, you want to do something and you're interested and fired up and you see a demand for it and you step out into that and then you're like, oh, hold on. This is way different than I mm-hmm. thought it was going to be. And I don't have the skill set for this. I thought maybe I did or I can bring in my expertise in regards to what I do, but not the structure like you said. Was there a time of self-doubt? Was there a time of, I'm not sure, did you backtrack a little bit? At that moment, what was the epiphany or the thing that finally got you to say, no, I'm going to make this happen? Oh, well, did I have the moment? 100%. I had the moment over and over again for the first year because when I did it alongside my corporate job for about six months and then I quit my corporate job and went into it full time. And I only had maybe, I'd say three, to, probably three to six months worth of savings in my account before I did this, Mm -hmm. thinking, all right, it's going to blow up within the three to six months, right? Sure. Three months tops. (laughs) The three months getting closer. And I'm like, okay, like I'm bringing in a little bit of money, but not enough to take over my salary. Mm -hmm. The doubt definitely started to creep in because again, I'm great at doing what I do. It's the same story of of the the clients, right? I'm great at doing what I do, but that doesn't make me a great business owner. Mm -hmm. I didn't know the intricacies of business. And so, yeah, it, what it really took, though, was me sitting down, creating more of an actual full process on how am I going to continue to actually get clients? Because that was the thing. I was getting clients through referrals, but to build it as a full scale business, I needed more than just referrals. And I was in that phase where I was throwing the spaghetti up against the wall, doing all the things, trying all the different methods. And it took me just sitting down and calming down and doing what I tell with my clients of sit down and think 80 20 what's actually working let's calm down and see what's actually working let's double down on that and once I started doing that and that started working for me it helped a lot in the confidence building I was just frazzled initially I was worried and scared and the money was going down in the account and I'm like okay do I do Instagram do I do LinkedIn do I go to conferences do I just do all the things and that just perpetuated. So then in that confusion, because that happens all the time, mm-hmm. where did the clarity come from? What was the thing that popped into your mind? I just have to do this one thing. What was it that kind of a step where I just have to start it's somewhere wise. or, and what was it? It was me actually t- doing what I should have probably known from the beginning, looking at the data and seeing what's actually work. What's actually work. I'm doing all of these things, but what's actually working. And so then it was literally for me as simple as adding onto my consult forms. How did you hear about us? Mm. And then when I saw that everybody heard about us through Instagram, I was like, then why am I on LinkedIn? And why am I going to all of these conferences? And why am I doing, let me double down on Instagram. And I did that and bam, it worked. And my, I was spending a fraction of the time because I let go of the 80% that wasn't doing anything and focused in on the 20% that was. And then I was able to, automate some of that 20% and and alleviate time even more. So it really just took me calming down the chaos to sit, look at the data, and then go with the data. And then once I did that, it smoothed out. In hindsight, you're like, why didn't I think of that in the first place? It's so obvious. That's a step that hardly anybody does when it gets overwhelming because it's too overwhelming. And then they try to cast the widest net to get the, especially at the very beginning, what I found, I've started five different businesses and I've got two now. So I, that that's the thing I got wrapped up in as well is that I just, I thought that I just had to try to reach as many people and it be everything to all people. And that never works. And it yes. creates so much confusion and it also wastes so much time. 
Yeah, it's like shiny object syndrome. We see, especially nowadays, there's like all these new tools. And we want to try all the things because we think that might be the thing that can help with X, Y, and Z. And it's one of the reasons why now when I'm working with clients and I see that they're having shiny object syndrome, I'm wanting to invest large amounts of money into things. I can tell them that story. Of, let's look at the data. Let's look at the numbers. Let's help that guide us. And still, you might, you might still say, oh, I love the data, but I'm still going to go and try this. But then great. Let's look at that data even right. later. But at least we're making the decisions based off of some data and not just based off of everyone's marketing. Because yeah, and, expert marketing will pull you in every time. Oh, 110%. And the shiny object thing is such a great analogy because just go on Instagram for two seconds and everybody has their own social media thing that they're doing. They've got their yeah. own program, with, especially with AI now. There's 9,000 programs out there that you can implement if you yeah. wanted to. Did you have a mentor? Was there somebody else helping you to make this uh, connection on this at the time? Or did you end up doing it on your own? I did have a mentor. However, she's great, but she was adding more things on my plate. Oh. So she was like, oh, you know what? In addition to this, you should also be you know, a speaker, world speaker and travel the globe. And and this is so a story of, or a lesson that I learned on this was there are amazing coaches and consultants and gurus and all of that out there that they're not all great for you. And, and period. And then also in different parts of your journey. In that part of my journey, that was not a good idea. Maybe what I do want to become a world speaker or whatever, great. But in that part of my journey, no, she was not listening to what my need was at that time. My need was quieting the noise hmm. and still one thing, not scaling a brand and doing all of these things. But because I was able to quiet that noise a little bit, I recognized that very early on. And we just cut the contract. It was like, okay, God, I'm not a good fit for you. You got me. A lot of times people will bring in mentors or they'll bring in consultants or they'll go and they'll have like brand builders group actually. So people thinking that will have the answers or they need to just follow that the way it goes. And that, was there a point where you figured that out? You bought into the mentorship and into the consulting and then you're like, oh, wait, hold up a second. I'm going the wrong way. Yes. Cause I started to do all of those things that was suggested. Mm -hmm. I started to try to pitch myself for speaking and doing all of these different things and actually started speaking and I was traveling. I didn't want to travel. I'm like, right. <laughs> this is giving me anxiety. I had just had my son. I, I didn't want to travel. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it, that's when I checked in and I was like, okay. And that's actually when I started thinking about the whole concept of peace and profit because I was like, okay, everyone knows that obviously my focus is going to be on profitability of businesses and scaling, but I also want folks to know that I'm about the peace too. I need you to have a business that's peaceful and profitable. I need you, it's not going to scale indefinitely. It's going to stop at some point and not be sustainable if it's not also peaceful to you. And so that's when I have to bring that in there to let folks know I am all about the numbers. I'm all about having these wildly successful financial businesses. But unless it is peaceful to you, it is not joyful for you. And that is the foundation for me. That's how I've run my decisions through that. Is it peaceful and profitable? Uh, what a great transition. I was the second part of that question was, how are you helping your clients now? That is invaluable to have a consultant, a mentor to come in like yourself and not only give them what they need in regards to the financial aspects and the success aspect in terms of business, but also to balance and yeah. to ground them because, and you and I know now being business owners, that's really important and you really can't be productive and you can't be successful unless you are grounded and you have a sense of balance. Can you talk a little bit about the peace and profits? Because I love that. I know you have other things going on, but in regards to when somebody comes into you and they're looking for the basics, right? The business consulting and the CFO stuff, how you integrate that in or how you sell it to them. I know it's a bad term. But a lot of times people aren't ready for that because all they're looking for is just the basic linear number stuff. Yeah. yeah, I focus on those intro conversations are around goals. I always, sure, give me your financial goals. I'm not sure. But a lot of times the financial goals are arbitrary numbers anyways. I need to tie those to something. So give me your life goals. Are you wanting to stay home more? Are you wanting to work a two, three day work week? Are you wanting to travel the, the globe? What do you want your days to look like? Who do you want to talk to on a daily basis? What does that look like? Do you have a large team? Do you have a small team? Are they virtual? Are they local? I need to know those things because this, this oh, I want to hit 5 million in sales. 
fabulous. Great. Thank you for that. But unless I know these other things as well, that means absolutely nothing. So those conversa- conversations always start or always start there. And honestly, I can tell very early on, and I'm sure the potential client can tell very early on as well, if it's a good fit. Because if they're just like, I, whatever, I don't care. If I'm traveling, if I'm not traveling, if I'm home, if I'm not home, I don't care. I just need to have $5 million in the bank. And I don't know why. Is right. that because you want to retire at a certain age? What is that tied to? Five is just an arbitrary number. Then we know that it's probably not, I'm probably not the best fit for you. There will be someone out there that's amazing for you that can help you get to five. Absolutely. But I need to also know why, because when we are, maybe the, maybe we're short of the goal. Is there something that we can do that can still help you get to what you really actually want out of life, even if you're at four, five, 4.5 instead of five? Yeah. Or if you're at six instead of five, yeah. does that still help you? Or did you travel right. more than you wanted to when you were away from your family? It all matters. But isn't that amazing that they're looking at a number and there is a why, even though they don't care Absolutely. about it or they don't bring it up? There is absolutely a why now the question is where does the why come from is it like an ego why in regards to because i'm overcompensating for something or it's because i was poor growing up and i need this for a self-esteem thing or is it genuinely a why take care of my family to to enrich my life or that that type of thing do you find that when you ask them to get to the why that there's some sort of an epiphany for them? Is there a shift in them? Is there any level of confidence in regards to really understanding what the journey is, not just the number? That's a good question. I would say the the majority of the time, I definitely find that the why is not something that that folks come to the call with. And they're, okay, let me think about that. And I don't know if it's because they are just shocked that I'm asking them or if they're just like, I don't really know. You don't don't know, right? But how shocking is that? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's important to have though. But yes, you're right. It's very it's usually very shocking for most people. I, I will say I have had a few people that are like, oh no, I want this because of this and this yeah. and this retirement goal and this. But for the most part, it's I've been head down just trying to make it day to day, grow the business so I can grow the team. And I heard that two million a year would be enough of what I need. And it's just like that. It's not tied to anything concrete. Mm-hmm. But then when they come back and we start having those conversations and I start to hear their why and we start to create actual plans and numbers around them and quantify these things, then I do feel like the pathway becomes lighter for them. Like they, they just seem lighter because they're like, oh, it's actually like it's tied to this. If I do this, I get this. Yeah. And so that makes it make sense to them versus just, oh, three million because some guy on Instagram said if you get three million dollars and you can have a key to pin. Yeah. Yeah. It's about alignment. Once you're aligned with your goals and your objectives based upon your why and you own that, growth can be exponential when it comes to that. And that's what I found a lot of times when people get involved in business, especially when they start their own business, like entrepreneurial, they're looking for uh, the money. They're looking for the, the finance only. And then they run out of steam or they hit a wall because they might make some money. And then ultimately they really haven't reconciled the why in them. And it's very empty. They don't get the carrot at the end. They don't uh, get the satisfaction. It's not uh, something that fulfills them. And then so they keep reaching and they keep going without really sitting down and figuring out what the why is. I think that's so important. Now, you work with a lot of women, women businesses. Can you go through maybe some of the confidence issues that the women have that you've dealt with in regards to starting a business and dealing with these issues and, and flourishing as they go? Absolutely. So I would say in the beginning, when starting a business, a lot of the confidence issues is just around how will this be accepted? Will it work? If I put it out there and I tell everyone that I have this new C business even or whatever it is, will people actually go there and buy anything? Or if I have this marketing service, who's going to call me? Is anyone actually going to sign up? And so it's just the confidence to even put it out into the world. And so usually for that, I just say, just test it out. Don't feel like you have to go on this huge scale production to start it up. Just test it out, start it off. Sometimes it just takes that first client to sign up. And then that next client will usually come from a referral from the first client. And before you know Mm -hmm. it, you're getting that momentum. So just test it out and try it. Also, you don't have to go start off with this huge, large scale thing because you might not love it. My very first business was not this. I ran a hair care product line because people just assumed, oh, I like your hair. What do you use? I'm like, I don't know. I just whip some stuff up in my kitchen. They're like, oh, I'll buy it. And I started a whole line. Really? And 
Yeah, and, and it actually did pretty well, but you want to know what happened? I don't like shipping stuff. I don't like right. packing stuff off and going to the post office every day. Yeah. So I realized very quickly, this is not a business for me. I did not need to be doing this. So had I started this huge production and got a warehouse and did all of this and started this business, it would have not done well. So just test it out. Start it off. See how you like it. Go from there. And then as you grow, some of the confidence things that I've seen, particularly nowadays with like social media, is the concern of bringing people into their team on finance or legal that's going to see their mess. We all have mess in our business. First, I want to say that we all have mess in our business. And so they're scared to bring someone in from finance or from legal or for operations to get everything in order um, because they feel like it has to be perfect because maybe their social media is perfect. And so they're like, oh, well, now I'm going to have somebody come in who can see this. And that's hard for a lot of people. Understandably hard, but it's hard. And first of all, again, we all have mess. And I think that's the thing that I lead with when folks come on and I can sense that lack of confidence because they're concerned on what I'm going to say when I see what's going on with their business. That is gold because it is so true. It's the perfectionism thing. And they're going to be scared of bringing anybody in thinking somebody's going to go, oh my God, how have you even survived this point? Because it's the image and it's the perfectionism. I know working with women for so many years, perfectionism is uh, rampant and it is just an insane restriction on growth and and, and expansion. Do you work with men and women as well? I do have a few, about my few cool dude clients. I have a couple of clients. Do you see any distinct difference between working with men versus women? 100%. Yes. One of the major differences is when I'm having a conversation with some of my cool dudes, we can talk numbers and talk like issues and strategies in their business. And it's just, it's very, almost like matter of fact, oh yeah, that didn't work very well. Okay, let's do this to turn it around. And, and it's just, that didn't work. What do we do to fix it? Versus sometimes if I'm talking to some of my amazing women clients, it might be that didn't work. And then we're, when I don't want to sit in that that didn't work that long. Like it, it didn't work. That's fine. Let's look at the data. Let's move on. Let's go from it. But it's not a you thing. It's not that you didn't work. It's not that you failed. It's just, that didn't work for the market. And so it's, it's a little bit more of explaining why with the data than just, it just didn't work. Let's just move on and go to something else. Fascinating. Cause they internalize it. It, it's, it yeah. becomes an, it, it, their failure becomes an identity thing. It's, yeah. it, isn't that just incredible how that is? That's a very hard thing for a lot of women to accept because they have this thing where they can't make any mistakes and they have to be perfect. And Everything has to look good and they can't have a mess. Oh my God. Can you imagine just every day, you're just one big ball of anxiety. So yeah. to, to finish the show off, do you have one like nice little piece of advice or something that you can uh, share with women listeners in regards to maybe think about starting a business or being in a position where they're want to scale a business maybe up? Absolutely. And actually back to what we were just talking about, which Um, on the failing piece, the quicker that we get, because I have that too, right? I'm I'm a woman. I have that too. But the quicker that we get um, comfortable with failing, the better. Because now I'm absolutely at the point where if something isn't working, I'm like, great. At least now I know now. Let's extrapolate the data from it and move on. And I have no problem with it. I will you're, release something and try something and I have zero problems if it works see, or not. You're an expert failure. I'm an expert <laughs> failure. Absolutely. Which, which is a great thing. It is. So much information I've gathered from all of these failures that have yeah. made successes. And yeah. so that's the tip that I really have, whether it's from starting the business or from trying new things in your business. The quicker that you put it out there and test it and sit back with that data on the back end of it, learn your lessons. And when I say data, I also don't want to get like too techie. It doesn't have to be like hardcore numbers, right? This could just be how you feel. Just a little assessment on what happened. Extract with that information and learn from it and then keep going. Business is iterative. It is not, you didn't create it and then it's that way forever. It's right. going to continue to change. And the way that you make the decisions on what changes and how they change, it's from the failures. Mm-hmm. So, 100%. Fail. That, that's where the data comes from. Yeah. Thank you, Kendra. That was just amazing. Can you please share where anybody can get a hold of you and, your, and the many things that you have to offer? Yeah, sure. The best way to get a hold of us is just go to thefinancefilm.com. So if you go to thefinancefilm.com, that's our website. On social media, 
We hang out mainly on Instagram at The Finance Femme, but the website is always the easy way to, to find us. That's The Finance Femme. No, no spaces in between. No spaces. And The Just Femme is F-E-M-M-E, -M -M -E, right? Correct. F -E -M -M. Finance Femme. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Thank you, Kendra. Again, I, I can't thank you enough. That was amazing. Many nuggets of information in there. And again, if you want to get a hold of me, it's TonyDufresne.com. Uh, or if you can't spell that, no, nope, spell my last name. It's TheConfidenceDoc.com. I have my ebook up there. It's uh, $7 and it's basically my keynote and my overall program condensed into a little ebook so you can get an idea of how to transform your life. More true confidence for women. It's uh, cheaper than a pumpkin spice latte and a cake pop. So if you want to change some stuff up and save some empty calories, go over there and take care of that. Hope things are good and I will see you next week. Bye.